Good evening everybody, thank you very much for joining in. This is 56th in the series where we are going to speak about a topic which is known as TRS OIS which is how to take an overnight index swap on TRS. TRS stands for total return swap. In the last two videos we had a word about single asset total return swap and multiple asset total return swap. But today we are going to speak about OIS on single asset total return swap. You can have OIS on multiple asset total return swap as well. Now from this side, I am Rahul Magan, working as a corporate treasurer in EXL, service, EXL Services India, which is an Indian counterpart of US National Institute from EXL Service Holding INC. At the same time, I am acting as a treasury trainer and business consultant for various forums across the world, predominantly in India and Singapore, and also acting as a virtual treasurer for various companies across various companies in India and Singapore. You are most welcome to join my 62 million LinkedIn networking at rahulmagan8 at the gmail.com and also welcome to join my LinkedIn FS group which is Foreign Exchange Maverick Thinkers having 2300 members and also welcome to see my 55, 55 or 56 YouTube videos uh, technical videos on YouTube I, can, I already crossed 2200 videos and on daily motion and also welcome to join on Facebook well today I'm going to speak about how to take overnight index swap on TRS now previous to that, there is, I would like to have a small introduction of overnight index swap. Overnight index swap, there is nothing but a swap which is used to hedge, which is used to hedge local currency asset or local currency liabilities, local currency asset and local currency liabilities in local currency books and in local country so basically overnight index swap is nothing if a US party wants to hedge a dollar loan in US when a Swiss party want to hedge CHF loan in Swiss these both are in prime example of thing which is known as overnight index swap. Overnight index swap is of two types. Basically, it's divided into two parts, which is overnight index swap bid, which is overnight index swap ask. Overnight index swap bid refers to the asset, which is nothing but I would refer corporate asset and bank. liabilities overnight index swap ask refers to liabilities which is nothing but corporate liability and bank asset today example we are going to speak about ois bid not ois ask and we are going to take ois on TRS which is refers to as TRS OIS total return swap on OIS on, to, on total on total return swap well again stressing that total return swap is nothing but a structure wherein you would, ex, you would exchange the dividend capital appreciation and the capital depreciation information with your counterparty without exchanging the ownership now this is how the TRS is going to get worked This is how it is going to get work. Assume you would have a bank which is JP Morgan Singapore and you would have a hedge fund. Now this, now since we are assuming a, uh, I'm, it, it would be good to, we are assuming sim, single asset, not multi asset TRS. Now in single asset TRS, we are assuming the asset is in the hands of it is the hands of which is I would refer to as reference asset. Now this hedge fund don't own any any reference asset. 
and this asset would give two kind of flows one is known as cash flows i would refer to as a dividend and another refers to as capital appreciation and capital depreciation now they were entering into into trs now in this he would pass this cash flow plus capital appreciation to hedge fund hedge fund will will pass some libor plus few basis point now higher the credit rating higher would be the basis point sorry higher the credit rating let me write here credit rating the rate, if the rating would be very high the if the this is i would refer as a ratings if the rating would be very high the basis point would be very low if the ratings would be low the basis point would be on a higher side now in this this would continue but in this hedge fund is taking a risk which is known as interest rate risk now this is a libor risk because he is paying libor he is paying libor and he want to cap that risk because what would happen if libor would shoot up now assuming this is a 5 year deal this is a 5 year deal and and every and this is a 5 year deal in how this which which deal is going to get work now every 5 year they have to pay now this hedge fund would pay l plus few basis point to jp morgan singapore assuming one year libor which is currently trading at 0.6% it will shoot up to 2% in that sense hedge fund would be in a loss and that party would be in a gain now jp morgan singapore is receiving l plus l plus few basis point which is libor plus few basis point hedge fund is paying libor plus few basis point and they want to hedge that now who is paying hedge fund is paying hedge fund would enter into a structure which is known as overnight index swap which would explain it here now hedge fund will say now hedge fund will say hedge fund would enter an interbank deal with the another bank which is known as ubs swiss he would say i am paying libor i am paying libor plus few basis point to jp morgan singapore and you would pay libor to me now my libor libor risk got cancelled in return i would pay you 5 years usd ois now this is a, an asset because he is pay basically he is paying so this is a liability he would pay 5 years usd ois as to bank now this way hedge fund would be able to cap his risk now he know whatsoever libor would be the rate if he is going to pay libor here he would have no problem and because ultimately whatsoever libor is paying he is receiving the libor and in nutshell he is he is he is receiving which is he is paying which is usd ois this is how you can apply the overnight index swap on total on total turn swap in simplistically speaking we can also refers to this as conversion of floating trs into conversion of fixed trs that's why overnight index swaps is going to get used now you are most welcome to contact me at 9899242978 you are also welcome to email me at rahulmagan8 and the red gmail.com but before winding up the show i would like to i would like to say one word that total return swap is a very key element in in interbank market especially in investment banking market and it would be of prime importance for corporate treasurer to understand that the floating rate risk which you have in in total return swap that should be hedged appropriately else you would be at a loss thank you very much thanks for your time